Welcome to Let's Play Gran Turismo, episode 14. So, in the previous episode, as you may know, we officially unlocked our eighth and final track of arcade mode in this game, that of course being Grand Valley Speedway. And we did that after completing Clubman Stage Route 5. Now we are officially going to move on to the second half of the arcade mode in this game. Uh, excuse me. And we of course are going to do that by going to Autumn Ring. Well, from here, this is officially where the goodies start to arrive. Now, uh, having a look through trying to decide on which car I have not used yet. Eh, you know what, I think I'll, you know what, I think, I think I'll use the other Master Roadster for this event. That of course, will be this. The Mazda Yunos Roadster, also known as the MX-5 Miata. The NTSC version. Also, if you live in America, as I both constantly and pedantically keep outlining that. But anyways, eh? Wow. You know, honestly, this car actually, this car does actually look good in silver. Um, you know what? Um, yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. Let's try silver. No more. No, just because I want to be stupid, I'll do this game, I'll do this race in drift mode. And also, I do apologise if I forgot to mention this, but drift mode in this game, at least in arcade mode, is basically no different to standard driving. Let's try this again. Okay, so this time we are going to try standard driving this time because, well, drift in terms of the driving style clearly does not work, at least for our UNOS Roadster. I am not going to use it again because, well, on my pre- because on my first attempt at this, I failed. So. I have essentially decided that instead I'm going to try this again except use standard driving mode this time, not drift, because because drift in terms of driving style to me is just fucking useless and I highly recommend you do not do it. So apparently there might be drift mode will not work, at least in single races. It will not work. But again, I will admit, it was, it was fun to see what exactly it was like to actually drift a car, and surprisingly now, I actually feel like I've got control of the car this time. This time the rear end is just not it's just not wanting to slap it's just not wanting it's just not wanting to slip and put me in a wreckage and already I am making contact with I think that's one of the mirages at least one of the mirages available in this game I of course am now up into second position. Racing after a Civic, just as I was with the words to RS. And I fucked up. 
two civics actually for this event. And surprisingly, this is actually proving to be harder than I first thought it was. Essentially. Even though notably overall, I am surprisingly managing to keep up with the older of the two civics. Oh, go for a dive. The dive has worked. The dive has put me up into the lead. Heading through the hairpin. I am up into the lead. And also bouncing a little there. As I'm keeping it in third gear. And now heading across the curbs. And it looks like it is going to be a victory on my second attempt. And so there we go. So yeah. So basically with drift mode, I would highly recommend you don't use it if you just want to get this over with and complete and, well, whatever the fuck you want to call it, but you can drift if you want, but obviously I would highly recommend that if you just want to get through the races, then I would highly recommend you do not do it. But anyways... One race down, two to go. Let's check through the grid order. So we had a 1993 Honda Civic SIR2, a Mitsubishi Mirage Cyborg R, a 1995 Nissan Primera, two liter, a Toyota A86 Trueno GT Apex. And we also had, and we also had the then current Civic at that time. And there was me in the classic Roadster, or at least the previous Roadster before the Roadster RS. So yeah, there is that. One down, two to go. And what car am I going to use? Well, I think for the B-class race, I might as well use the Prelude for the B-class race. As I'm going to look through what colors are available to me. Um, I already have the blue. I've already driven the Honda in black, that was in tech Well, I suppose, I suppose for this one, I could go all silver if I wanted to. You know, just be stupid and whatnot. But, yeah. Um, yeah, let's try it. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go in silver. But yeah. So essentially, like I said before, if you just want to get through these races, then I highly recommend for the single races, you do not use drift mode, because the only place you will officially be drifting is into the wall, and you will essentially be off the pace, just basically racking in every corner. Admit, I really haven't considered using a prelude in silver, and oddly enough, I think I think to me this set, this actually isn't this isn't as bad of a combination as I thought it was going to be. Although then again, of course, I am essentially using VTEC, essentially Honda's most dominant. 
Oh, at least. At least for the engines and the motors anyway. At least for the engines and the motors anyway. As I am already up into the lead. Using probably one of the best cars in the B-Class category. As we now move on to the second and final lap here at Autumn Ring. And this is the full Autumn Ring course, if anyone asking. And I believe this is also the first time I have officially visited Autumn Ring this game, you know, essentially because this is, well, arcade mode. And this is essentially what I am basically just roping with, essentially. But anyways, yeah. Coming through the spiral, now over the bridge, Heading through the final sequence of corners before we go on to the straightaway. And it is victory number two. At Autumn Ring and my silver prelude. Already getting a nudge from the Sylvia S14. And wow, 5.6 seconds from 56. I must say, that has got to be a big F with the Cosmo. But, anyways, let's check through the starting order. So, we had a Nissan Sylvia S14. Hayes, a third generation Toyota Supra 3 litre turbo, from the late 80s, a 94 Mitsubishi FTO GPX, a Subaru Alcyon SPX S4, and rounding out the field, a Mazda Cosmo 13B Type S. So, I could save the replay if I wanted to, but instead, I'm going to try something different. I am going to head down to Chevrolet, and I of course am going to use The Boy. Yes, this is The Boy. The 67 Chevrolet Corvette 47 Coupe, also known as the Coupe, if you live in America. And do we have this car available in silver? No, that's actually not bad, but I would have said that's probably turquoise. I'll just have a look through. Um, yeah. Um, you know what? Yeah, I think I'll go for this one. So yeah, you know about how I said I was wanting to use the Corvette? Well, here it is. I am officially using the Corvette for the A-Class race. So. Just taking a sip of water before our third and final race here at Autumn Ring, the A-Class race. Driving, probably, probably the coolest car for me. God damn it, this car has got some acceleration.
also, and also this is, and also the, st the steering on this car as well is pretty much appalling. At least in terms of trying to turn into the corner. Considering this car itself is essentially... Considering this car itself was essentially developed... Oh, and I almost spun it there. But still... Still, holy shit, this car has got some power. This car has definitely got some power. It's also got an unbelievable turning. I think I can see why you have to break early with this car. Considering this is the second and only other car exclusive to the arcade mode in this game. I'm breaking early because essentially I don't want to lose the rear. Considering this car itself was notably was notably developed in the days before power steering. And another thing I've noticed with this car is that the back end definitely wants to step out a lot. Because the back end of this car is definitely a tailfish. Anyways, victory! As I managed to accomplish it in a Corvette. And the reason why I use this is essentially because this is probably the closest I'm going to get to silver. At least with this car anyway. And wow. There is quite a margin from 4th to 6th. 2 seconds. So surprisingly the AI actually not, actually weren't as close in that race as they usually are. But anyway, saving the replay. And I need to delete the file. Well, well, fortunately at least, I've already got my video footage for a suitable thumbnail, so obviously I don't have to worry about that. And there we go. So, Autumn Ring in Arcade Mode is now complete. And... If we also check the bonus items, just before I save the game, we have now unlocked our first manufacturer. And that first manufacturer is Toyota, as you can see there by the Supra. So, that was Autumn Ring in Arcade Mode. Yes, I will. So, that was Autumn Ring in Arcade Mode. Next time we will be doing Deep Forest in Arcade Mode. And probably testing out our recently unlocked manufacturer. So, yeah, stay tuned for more GT1.